Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create your first drum beat using a MIDI controller in Reaper. For the most part, there's two different ways we can create a drum beat in Reaper. The first way is using a sequencer to trigger our drum samples. The other way is to play or perform it using a MIDI controller or drum pads. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do it using a MIDI controller. But I've also made a similar video using a sequencer. If you prefer to see that video, check the list of videos available on the Reaper video homepage. That video should be just below this one. So the first thing we're going to do is go to the Reaper Stash website. We'll go to Google and type in Reaper Stash. Then we'll choose this right here. Then we'll search first drum beat. And this file shows up where we can download the samples we'll be using to create our first drum beat. Now let's go back to Reaper and put a plugin on this first track I created. Let's go to the track effects. We'll go to the Reaper plugins and choose Resamplematic 5000, which is the sampler that comes with Reaper. So let's double click it. Now let's go to the folder we just downloaded. Right over here. On PC, that's called your Explorer. On Mac, it's the Finder. And here are the samples we're going to use. Let's start off with the kick. Just drag it in to the plugin, and we can click this button to hear the sample. That's our kick. Then we'll go down here to minimum volume and bring the knob all the way down to infinite, and that's going to allow our sample to be velocity sensitive. So if it's triggered harder, it'll be louder. And if it's triggered quietly, it'll be softer. We're going to use velocity to adjust the volume of each sample. Then we'll go down over here to note start and note end, where we can choose the MIDI note that's going to trigger this sample. I'll type in 48, which is C2, to both of them. And now C2 is going to trigger the kick sample. So let's add the rest. We'll first select the plugin, copy it, and then paste it. Now we have a new one where we could put our snare. Let's grab the snare right here, drag that in, play it from here. Let's change the note for this sample so a different MIDI note triggers the snare. Let's change this to 50, which is D2. And let's move on to the other samples. Copy and paste it. Let's do the clap right here, drag it in, change the note to 52, which is E2. There's our clap. Do it again for a closed hat right here, drag it in. Let's hear the hi hat. Change this note to 54 which is F-sharp 2, and do another one for the open hat. Drag it in, change the note to 58, which is B-flat 2, and then I want to turn on, right down here, Obey Note Offs. Normally when we trigger these samples, it just plays the whole sample. But if we choose this, the sample only plays while our MIDI key is held down. So if we play a short note, the note is short, which will help for things like this. Where you want the hi-hat to cut off when you play the next note. If this was turned off, it would sound like this. Which sounds wrong because both hi-hats are playing at the same time. So let's turn this on, and let's move on to the next sample. Copy and paste this. 
and let's go to shot one, which is more of a musical sample that has a pitch to it. Sounds like this. Let's keep obey note offs on. Let's change the note to 60, which is C3. Copy and paste this. And let's go to shot two. Drag this in. And that sounds like this. And change that note to 61, which is D flat three. Copy and paste this. And bring in the reverse symbol, which sounds like this. To create a reverse effect, we'll change this to 62, which is D3. And then finally, some white noise, which we'll use as a crash for the top of our chorus, which sounds like this. And again, we'll leave on obey note offs and change this to 64, which is E3. So now we have all the sounds we're gonna need, but now we need a way to trigger it. So let's make sure we plug in a MIDI controller or pads. Then we'll go to our preferences under options and go down to MIDI devices. Make sure your device shows up here, double click it, and make sure it's enabled. Then we can go back to our track and set up the input for that device. Go to MIDI, find your device here, all channels. Then we'll turn on input monitoring and go into record. And we should hear our drum samples when we play our MIDI keyboard. Now we're ready to record our first drum part. We're gonna start off by just recording one bar. So we'll go from bar three to bar four. Hold on control on the PC or command on the Mac and just draw a MIDI item. Then we're gonna go back to the track under this section here, which decides what we record and switch it from input to MIDI and MIDI overdub. If we choose this, we can record over and over again on the same section with the same MIDI item, making it a lot easier to layer our parts because we can't play them all in one pass. So let's choose this. And I also want to quantize on the way in. So our drum performance will be perfect. So I'm going to right click over here and go down to track recording settings. Then I'll turn on Quantize Track MIDI Recording and change this to 16th notes. Because that's the part we're going to be playing. Also going to turn on Quantize Note Offs. So to quantize the end of our notes as well as the beginning, which will help for the samples where we left on Obey Note Offs, like the open hat. So let's close this and turn on Loop Recording. Down here, so when we're recording, it'll loop. Then we'll set the song tempo down over here to 80 beats per minute. And we also want to turn on the metronome right up here. And right click it. Now let's turn on count in before recording. And let's make it one bar. So we'll get a one bar count in before recording where we can hear the metronome. So now we're ready to record. Let's hold down shift and double click this item. And that creates a time selection that's exactly the size of the item, which is one bar right now. Then let's double click it to open up the MIDI editor. And we can see our notes being recorded in real time. We can see the notes right here with their samples. Now the part we're gonna play is pretty simple. I'm gonna start off with the kick and snare, which will sound like this.
Then I'm going to add the clap on B4 to go with the snare every other time. Then I'm going to add a hi-hat that plays an eighth note part that's accented. So every other hit is a bit harder, like this. With an open hat at the end. So let's start recording. And it plays back after each pass. But said the clap. And the hi hat. But notice the open hat is too short. So let's lengthen it right here and hear that. And the hi hat is a bit too loud. So let's right click it to select them all and bring it down based on the velocities. Let's bring down the open hat too. That sounds better. But I'm noticing the part is a bit too short. I want the open hi hat every other time or every other bar. So let's close this. And let's take our item and duplicate it. Control on the PC, Command on the Mac, from bar three to bar four. Select them both, right click, and glue them. So now we have one item that's two bars long. Double click it, and here's our part. But I want to get rid of the open hat on the first bar. So I'll double click it and put one right here. That sounds better with the open hat every other bar, or every two bars. Now let's add shot one and shot two. And I'm going to copy the kick part with both of them. Go into record. I want to change the hi hat part right here. Let's add some faster notes to the part. And to do that, let's delete this by double clicking it. Let's change the grid down here to 64th notes. Now let's paint some notes right here. Alt Control on the PC or Option Command on the Mac. It changes to a paint tool and we could draw in. 64th notes, like this, which sound like this. Let's get rid of the last one by double clicking it. Let's adjust the velocity for all of these. So it fades in. Let's bring this up so we can see the velocity for these notes. Control on the PC, Command on the Mac, and just draw in a fade in. That sounds better, but I want to try something else where this part can pan. So let's go back to our samples right here. And let's grab the hi hat and copy and paste it twice. Let's put the copies up here. So the next two, the original, let's change the notes to 55, G2. And 56, which is G sharp 2. Then we can change the panning on those notes. Let's make this one left and this one right. Now let's go back to the MIDI editor. Let's delete these notes. 
And let's draw them over here instead, starting here and here. So they should pan from left to right. Let's draw in a better fade like this. That sounds better. Now I want to add the white noise and the reverse cymbal. But I don't want to do it every two bars. I want to use them every four bars. Let's go back to here, duplicate it again, select both, and glue them. Shift, double click to select it all. Double click it to open the editor. And now the part looks like this. So I want to play the white noise at the top and the reverse symbol towards the end, like this. Going to record. But at the end, after the reverse, we don't need the open hat. So let's delete it, and it sounds like this. Now let's create one other part that we can use as a breakdown verse, with this part being our chorus. So let's close this, and let's duplicate this part over to here. And this could be our chorus, and this could be our breakdown verse. So let's double click it, and let's get rid of the kick, right click, select them all, delete it. We'll do the same with the snare, and clear it. And let's get rid of the white noise, so it sounds like this. But let's add a fill towards the end using the kick and the snare, like this. Let's hear that. Sounds pretty good. So now let's close this. Now we have a breakdown verse right here. And this section over here could be our chorus. Let's select them both and duplicate them. To bar 11. Now, if we had more parts, we can create a full song. But for now, I just wanted to create a few drum parts to get us going. So let's hear what we have. So that's pretty much it. That's creating your first drum part using a MIDI controller in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.
Ah!